the longest problem of this test by far. And we have to integrate this rational function. So you should immediately think we need to do something here, whether it be partial fractions or simplification or whatnot, something along those lines. Now what you want to notice first is that the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator. And in that case, you always want to start off by doing polynomial long division to simplify it as much as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide x cubed plus x squared. Remember to fill in the remaining uh, powers of x with zeros. So we're going to divide that by x squared plus 2x uh, plus 5. So to make it simpler, make sure you line everything up as well so that we check how many times x squared and go into x cubed, so that would be x. So I'll write that here. When you multiply through, you get x cubed plus 2x squared plus 5x, and then you subtract. So when we subtract here, we're going to get negative x squared <clears throat> minus 5x, bring down the plus 0. And how many times is x squared going to negative x squared? We'd have minus 1. Do it one more time. And then subtract. And what we get at the end is we get minus 3x plus 5. And now we're down to a term that has a lower degree than what we're dividing by, so that's going to be our remainder. So we have a remainder of negative 3x plus 5 all over our original dividend, or, or divisor. x squared plus 2x plus 5. So this right here is the same thing as this. So obviously x minus 1 is very simple integrals, but now we can deal with this as its own thing and see what goes on there. So now we have the integral of x minus 1 plus negative 3x plus 5 all over x squared plus 2x plus 5. So now we need to look at a couple of other things. I'm going to put dx. So our denominator here, x squared plus 2x plus 5, is not factorable. So this is not going to be a partial fractions problem. So th instead, this is going to be some combination of natural log or uh, arctan type of things. Or it could be some sort of trig representation depending on what the bottom factors into. So remember that in this case, you always want to complete the square in the denominator to see what you get there. So in this case, we would have x minus 1 plus, so our denominator here, a perfect square would be x squared plus 2x plus 1, because that's just x plus 1 squared. So we have 4 extra. So this factors into x plus 1 squared plus 4 minus 3x plus 5 on the numerator still. So you can see that this is in the arctan form. Now remember, you only have an arctan if your numerator is also a constant. So here's the next uh, tip for these types of problems. You don't want to split it up as negative 3x over this and 5 over this and try to deal with each one because neither of those is going to work out perfectly. Instead, what you want to think is the ln part is when the top is equal to the derivative of the bottom or at least equal to the variable part of that off by a constant. So the derivative of our bottom part here is going to be 2 times x plus 1. In other words, we just want x plus 1. So if uh, the factor x plus 1 appeared in the numerator, then we would, this would be an ln problem. And we can do that here. So we need a factor of x plus 1 in the numerator. We can do that by splitting up this number. So we have negative 3x. In order to get x plus 1, we would need to have negative 3x minus 3. Because if you factored out the negative 3, you'd get x plus 1. And now we have a perfect derivative, and this becomes an ln. So if we want negative 3x minus 3, how do we get back to having plus 5? We have to have plus 8, because minus 3 plus 8 is 5. So now, before we evaluate, let's split this up one more time. So we're going to have... 
negative 3 times x plus 1 over our denominator. And then we're going to have 8 over our denominator. So now we're down to all the things that we could possibly have. This is going to be a natural log, and this is going to be some sort of arctangent function. Okay, so let's start evaluating those antiderivatives. Okay, so the first one is going to be x squared over 2 antiderivative of x, antiderivative of 1 is going to be minus x. So here, we have, almost have the exact derivative of the uh, denominator in the numerator. We're off by a constant, so to make this a little bit easier, we can do a u substitution and set u equal to x plus 1. Now, you don't need to do any du dx switching because these two things have the same derivative, so there's no factor there. So what we get here is minus 3 times, so I'm taking this negative 3 out of the integral, we get the integral of u over u squared plus 4. And then we get plus 8 times the integral of 1 over x plus 1 squared plus 4. So I'm not going to do substitution on that one until we've figured out this one. Okay, so the derivative of the denominator would be 2u. So the numerator needs to be 2u to make it an ln. So if we put a 2 here, we have to have divided by 2 in the front because then we're not doing anything. We're multiplying by 1. So now this just becomes a simple natural log. So now let's work with this one. Remember, to have an arctangent, your constant here that's added to the, uh, the term that's squared for the variable has to be 1. So we need to take a 4 out of the denominator and write the next line um, with this integral completed. So this is going to be the ln of u squared plus 4. So we have 3 halves ln u squared plus 4. So now here, we're going to have to take a 4 out of the denominator. So we're going to get 8 over 4. So let's think about what we have left. I'm going to write this in the other order. So when we take 4 out of 4, we get 1. This term would just be x plus 1 squared divided by 4. However, remember to do an arctan, you want to have something in its entirety squared. So that would be x plus 1 over 2 quantity squared. So you can see on the bottom you get 2 squared, which is 4. So if you multiply the 4 back, you get the same thing. But now this is in arctangent form. So the last thing we need to do is now do a substitution where we say u equals x plus 1 over 2. You can see there that you do have a factor when you do your u substitution. So du is equal to 1 half dx. So dx is equal to 2 du. Okay, so finally let's figure out what we have here. Um, for the ln, well, we can plug back in. Remember that our u here was x plus 1. So we have x plus 1 squared plus 4. So now for our arctangent function, this all becomes u, and we have 1 over 1 plus u squared. But, I forgot the dx. We plug in dx, we get 2 du, so we have an extra 2 that we need to multiply outside. 8 over 4 is 2, so we get 2 times 2. So, let me start writing down here. We get 4. And then the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared is going to be arctan of u. But then, what was our u? Our u is x plus 1 over 2. And we have plus c because we had an indefinite integral. Okay, so that... All of those together is the answer to this problem here. So remember that when you have a higher degree, uh, a rational function with a higher degree on the numerator, you got to do long division first. But then once you get something that's not factorable, it's going to turn into completing the square, and you're going to get either arctans or lns, depending on how you work it out. 
Now, if you had not done what I did here and separated this 5 into minus 3 and 8 so that these worked out nicely and you just did minus 3x and plus 5, you would have done a little bit extra work with each, but you still should come out to the same answer.